I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of cheating. So my name is Jaden. I'm with Canonical, as you probably guessed from my amazingly orange shirt. And the timer started, so we're actually going to do this. Get serious. All right, so thank you guys for joining us. This is a lightning talk, so we're going to be cutting through things real quick. But if you have any questions, please feel free to um, find me. My name is Jaden. You can find my coworker, Nicholas. He's a very, very smart fellow. Knows more than I do, I would say. Um, so he's definitely a good person to ask. Uh, we also have people at our big orange booth over there. Can't miss it. So um, we're here if you have any questions. So we're going to talk about Microsoft, just to give you a quick rundown of what it is and who it's for and, and why we made this thing. Because you might be thinking, hey, Ceph's good enough. Why do we need to shrink it down? What are we doing? So first, Microsoft is a, um, it's a new approach to delivering SNEF. It's a snap. It also has a, a DQ-like cluster inside of it. And it still is a full Ceph solution. So you can get all the great Ceph APIs and features um, that you are used to with Ceph. But it's just in a, a nice little package that's quick and easy to install. It's got some nice um, convenience interfaces that wrap some of the Ceph functionality so you don't have to spend a day trying to spin up a Ceph cluster. You can just get it going, do you know, get a Ceph cluster up in five minutes or so and continue with the work you actually need to do that needs Ceph but isn't spinning up a Ceph cluster. And it really is meant to be run um, anywhere, especially on like your laptop or the edge or, or someplace that is a lot smaller than a traditional Ceph cluster. So the reason why we made this, though, is because, I don't know about you, but have you ever needed to develop against Ceph, but you didn't want to go through the trouble of setting up an entire Ceph cluster, or you didn't have one available because you would break production data or something like that? And so you either have to spend a day provisioning a Ceph cluster that you're going to throw away, or you just don't do the work. Well, Microsoft may be the solution for you uh, because it gives you Ceph. It gives you the tools you need to do your job to provide object storage, block storage, those kinds of things very quickly, very simply, uh, very easy to get, get going. And it's also much more um, suitable for people who are less skilled and less familiar with Ceph. Um, it has a lot of, of thoughts about how to set up Ceph and configure it so you can just get on with your, your um, day. And again, like I said, it's way more for, for smaller use cases, Edge, uh, development, those kinds of things, embedded um, Ceph applications, then that wouldn't be appropriate for a big Ceph cluster with multiple hardware nodes and lots of OSDs and things like that. So as I said, it is a snap package. So you download the snap, gives you some commands to run that you use to bootstrap the Ceph cluster, to add the OSDs, to manage Ceph. Um, a few snaps before should be very, very familiar. Um, all of the dependencies and things, of course, are, are packaged inside the snap, so you don't have to worry about messing up your host operating system or installing a bunch of extra packages. Um, I like this because it means I can install it on my laptop without having to ruin my laptop and reOS, as sometimes happens when you're installing dependencies and, and fun hidden software that projects require. And uh, as I mentioned, we do use um, DQ Lite for the clustering. Um, if you're not familiar with, with DQLite, it's a clustered um, SQLite implementation um, that we use heavily at Canonical for our cluster services to sync data between the different cluster members. Um, it is, is quite nice. Um, this lets Microsoft maintain um, syncing the Ceph state and, and making sure all the, the Ceph pieces know what's going on and what to, to, who to talk to and how everything is, is configured. Um, and it really is meant for, for um, labs and environments that are, are not suitable for like a three node MySQL cluster or PostgreSQL cluster, because that is a lot of overhead when you just need to do a development project. So um, like I mentioned, some use cases, uh, we are targeting things like development, uh, running it on your own laptop, or running it in a lab. We're targeting um, edge uses, um, places where you only maybe have one hardware node, but you still want to have Ceph APIs, Ceph object storage. Um, Ceph block storage available. Um, one use case that I really like, if you have had a chance to try out um, the new Sunbeam um, OpenStack deployer that we, we announced earlier this week, um, it uses Microsoft inside of it as an embedded application um, to provide block storage for OpenStack. So um, I like this because the end user, when they, when they install Sunbeam, they don't have to worry about Ceph. We can give them Ceph in an embedded way. We can give it to them all configured out of the box, um, thanks to Microsoft and they can just go on with their day and enjoy the benefits of Ceph uh, block storage for OpenStack without having to become a Ceph expert, uh, when really all they want to do is just run some VMs or learn about this cool new thing called OpenStack. Um, new to them, not new to us, of course. 
Uh, but those are the main use cases that we're, we're trying to target at this time, I would say. And we've got a quick demo showing you how it works. So let me uh, switch over to that. This is an askinema. If you're not familiar with it, it's a recording of uh, just a command line session. So we're going to go through um, just some basic commands showing you how to um, execute Microsoft and, and get Ceph set up through Microsoft on a uh, three-node virtual machine cluster. So here we are installing the Microsoft Snap. To start, we're going to install it on each one of those virtual machines. You're going to have a little bit of trouble typing. You know how it happens when you're trying to record or do a demo. That's when you always make your mistakes. So here we are going to bootstrap the, the cluster. Very quick, it's already done. So the way you do Microsoft, you bootstrap your first node, and then you um, generate tokens that you can use to add other cluster members. So we've generated two tokens to add the second and third Ceph cluster member um, here in this demo, or this step of the demo. And now on the VM1, we just ran the join command with that first token. So that tells Microsoft, hey, add this, add this, cluster, uh, this um, node in this node that we uh, previously bootstrapped, and then we joined the second virtual machine. And so now we're gonna SSH into the first virtual machine, which was the first one we set. You can see here, um, all three nodes are showing up in Microsoft. And here is your Ceph status. It's showing three daemons, one VM0, VM1, VM2. And now we're done inside of that first instance. So let's keep on looking and seeing what, what we've got going on. So here we're adding um, OSDs through Microsoft. Now you can see that we've got um, OSDs. And now we're just going to add RGW, just as simple as we, we added the OSDs. I wish I had more to explain, but I feel like it's pretty straightforward what's going on. And I really wouldn't be able to add much uh, beyond enable RGW. So as you can see right now, we very quickly have set up an entire Ceph cluster, bootstrapped it, added OSDs, added um, Rados Gateway. All the pieces are, are right there. And now we're just gonna run a quick, quick, quick demo um, application to show you that this is actually working. It's not a trick. There's no smoke and mirrors. This is actual real Ceph that will behave the same way that you, you are accustomed to, that you love, that you maybe don't love as much. Um, it still is Ceph under the hood, just in this nice, nice, compact, wrapped up package. So here we are um, adding a, um, just a bunch of demo data to S3, um, using S3 CMD, which is a um, command line tool for managing S3 objects. And I think that is the end. Yep. So. Two or so minutes, we set up a Ceph cluster, added all the OSDs, got it all ready, showed you how it's working. Simple as that. I wish I had more that I could explain or, or, or tell you, you know, this is how it works, this is how it, but it really is as simple, as simple as that, that process we just showed you. And sure, it's a little tiny bit sped up, but not really more than, than what you would think. There we go. And th that's a URL for that demo if you wanted to see it again. Still there, happy to pause a sec if you wanna take a picture of that. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the next slide since we're running a little bit low on time. And all of these slides and the talks will be on um, YouTube later. Um, so don't worry if you, if you missed this. And if you did miss it, just come let me know and I'll give you the URL. Happy to do that. Um, so we do have a lot of, of exciting things on the roadmap. Uh, Microsoft is still relatively new. It's still very, very early days. Um, so we're trying to add a lot more of the Ceph features and expose them to the end user. Um, you can see there we're gonna um, encrypt the OSDs. We've got a lot of different things for, for scalability because even though um, we're targeting small use case, we do want people to be able to have you know three or five nodes or a small number of nodes. Um, like if you have an edge deployment um, with three or five hosts that needs, needs block storage or object storage. And then we wanna make it even more convenient and streamlined so you can get on with your day and do the work that you actually need to do. 
So if you'd like to try out Microsoft or learn more, we've got these QR codes. Uh, the one on the left takes you to the website for Microsoft. The one on the right takes you to the GitHub repository where the code actually lives if you want to check that out and see what that's about. I'll pause just a moment so you guys can take some pictures. And again, if you have any questions, um, just you can find me, you can find um, Nicholas, you can ask our coworkers, they'll let us know. Um, happy to, to pass along my contact information too if you want to reach out later. Um, yeah, because I know it's, it's pretty exciting. I'm excited to see this come together because as much as I, I love Ceph, I don't love having to set it up when I just need to do some, some work or some development. It's just, it's just not fun, not fun enough. And as I mentioned before, um, if you haven't had a chance to try it out, we are doing a, um, a game of sorts with Sunbeam. You, if you try out Sunbeam and you install it, um, you can get a code um, for a prize that you can redeem at our booth over there. We're still doing that today. We also have a uh, demonstration and workshop today at 4, 4.15, something around that time um, that we're going to have resources um, available for you to try out Sunbeam if you don't have a computer or something like that here and we'll have people on hand to talk about it. And I just mentioned that again, because Sunbeam is a really great use case where we're taking Microsoft, we're putting it in Sunbeam um, to provide Ceph storage for OpenStack users. So thank you. We'll take some questions now. We've got just under four minutes. Yes. The question was, what is the minimum size of Microsoft? Can I run it on a single node? Yes, you can. You absolutely can. I mean, clearly, you know, if, if the node fails, you're going to lose data, so be careful. But yeah, you can absolutely run it on a. Yes. In yes. So actually, I mean, it, it, you, you can. Uh, the only thing you have to pay attention to uh, are the crush rules that are. So the default crush rules are assuming three OSDs, um, and so uh, you'd have to change those manually to, uh, you know change them appropriately for one node. We don't do that automatically yet. But that's also a planned feature to automate that um, and actually fix crush rules in that use case. Thanks, this is why I said he's the smart guy. Um, any other questions or what other questions do people have? Yes. Uh, the question was, does, does Microsoft support snapshots and, and advanced Ceph features? Um, I mean, you have Ceph. Like, you still do have Ceph, and you can do all the things you can normally do with Ceph. Um, you just have to drop down and use the Ceph command instead of Microsoft. Um, that right now, the options that Microsoft exposes are just for the deployment. That's where we are. But we do expect down the road to add um, convenience commands for more advanced features so you don't have to be a, a master of Ceph to enjoy those, those benefits. Any other questions? We have just under two minutes. Cool, well, if anyone does have any more questions that you uh, come up with later, I'll, we'll be here all day. Uh, and like I said, we have that Sunbeam workshop too. If you wanna see uh, real world use of Microsoft in action, um, come try out Sunbeam, install it, see the Microsoft and how, how wonderful it is. Maybe win a prize. Um, and Spend some time with, with some awesome orange shirted people. Um, otherwise, thank you all for, for listening to the talk. Thank you all for coming to the conference. And thank you for using OpenStack and Ceph. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and a safe travel home.